Let's speak to Mike Judge, who's from the Christian Institute, who funded the Bulls' legal defence. Hello, Mike. Hello. Um, A couple of points there that Stephen Preddy has made. The first one is the policy was that um, Peter and Hazel Mary only allowed uh, married couples to share a room. And uh, the point that Stephen Preddy is making, he says the policy is illegal because it treats marriages and civil partnerships, which they were in, he says, a legal equivalent of marriage, differently. Yes, and that, that's certainly what the, the judge decided. This was a test case, the, the first time that that particular point has been explored by the courts. The judge did recognise that in coming to that conclusion that the ruling does infringe the religious rights of Peter and Hazel Mary Bull and forces them to act against their beliefs. And for that reason, he specified that he would allow them to appeal to the next stage. And, and, and I think that that's likely to happen. Evidently, there's a, there's a clash of rights here and it's important that our courts are able to consider those important matters. Mm, you put your finger on it. There is a clash of rights. There, there, there's the right um, not to be discriminated against, which um, Mr. Preddy was talking about and there's the the right to um, religious expression is it different though when it's not when you're not exercising your pri- your religious views privately when you're running a business well I, I think certainly the right to express your religious belief isn't an absolute right it, it does have to be limited to protect the rights of others and, and we do accept that but we must be very careful before we start saying that really religion is a private thing and you're perfectly at liberty to believe what you like privately but it's not allowed to enter into public life and i think that that's certainly how a lot of christians feel that they do feel marginalized from public life and that they're not allowed to live and work in accordance with their faith mm. But there is a different point. I mean, the point really that I was trying to make is that, again, you can have your religious views in private um, and, and at home and, and in church or wherever you choose to worship. But when you are talking about a, a commercial situation, when you are involving other people, is it possible for you to suspend your religious expression at that point? Well, human rights don't end when we enter into the commercial world or or to the workplace. But you do become subject to to other legislation, clearly, for example, the Equality Act. Yes, but but also there is other legislation that protects um, people's liberty of conscience and, and free speech and religious liberty. I mean, take the example of the atheist who chooses to work at a school in full knowledge that it's the law that schools have to provide a a daily act of religious worship. Mm. But the law says, but we understand that if you don't want to do that, you can be exempt from that, because otherwise it would mean atheists can't be teachers in in state schools. So equally, I think, you know, what we need here is is a bit of balance that respects competing rights. And how do the Bulls feel today? You said that it is likely that they will appeal. They're disappointed by the ruling, obviously, but they are encouraged by the fact that they were given leave to appeal. And I think specifically encouraged by the reasons that the judge gave for leave to appeal. Uh, they're obviously going to take time to make a, come to a considered decision with legal advice. Um, and um, But uh, I think a lot of Christians are looking onto this case with a great deal of interest. Mm. OK, Mike, thank you. Mike Judge from the Christian Institute.